Today, I gotta clean my plates. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hi guys, so for those of you that don't know, my name is Michael and I am the woodworker for MK Designs. And yes, today I, I need to clean my blades. Um, it's another one of those maintenance things I need to do before I start on the big project I was talking about. And uh, I wanted to show you guys how I do it. I know there's a lot of videos out there on how to do it. As a matter of fact, there's two that I know of that do the exact same method that I do. And I'll post a link to their videos as well if you'd like. And uh, so, yeah, and no, I didn't cut my hair. I've got it pulled back because it's gotten long enough now that when the wind blows, it blows it in my face. And you know, when you're using power tools and things like that, it, that's not a good thing. <laughs> you can't see. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, um, yeah, let me show you my blades and then we'll get into what I do to clean them. Okay, so these are the blades, the three blades that I use most often. The one I use the most often is this Forest Woodworker 2 40 tooth combination blade. And as you can see, it's it's time to be cleaned. It's still sharp, but it, it just needs to be cleaned. And um, that'll stop some of the burning and whatnot and actually make it cut better than it has been. And um, yeah, it, it definitely needs to be cleaned. Uh, the one that I use when this one is out for sharpening is this Freud 50 tooth combination blade. And uh, it's actually not that bad because I haven't used it that much since the last time I cleaned it, but I'm gonna clean it up anyway. And the next one I use the most often besides that one is this one. It is a 25 tooth rip blade that's got a flat grind on it um, when this one goes dull I'd actually replace it with the forest equivalent of it forest blades by, by far are the best blades that I have found and yeah I know a lot of people are gonna ask why I don't have a crosscut blade and a rip blade because you know a lot of people seem to think that you have to switch blades out every time you're doing one or the other I found that to not necessarily be the case there are times when I will use this blade for specific rip cuts, but not very often, actually. And I do have a crosscut blade, but I don't use it hardly at all um, because this blade does a perfect job of it. And for the most part, this blade does all my rip cuts just as well. So yeah, I'm gonna get these blades cleaned and show you guys how I do it. Okay, so I purchased the Rockler router bit and saw blade cleaning kit, and it comes with this tub and a quart of the pitch and resin remover, uh, a wire brush, brass wire brush, and it also comes with a little container to be able to put router bits in. And basically what I do is, um, you're supposed to dilute the stuff according to the instructions, but this stuff is non-toxic and I really don't see it or need to do that and excuse the stuff coming out of the bottle right now I didn't have a filter the last time I used this so all the sludge from cleaning the blades before kind of wound up in the bottle um, but yeah I, I pour it in there over the blade and then I let the blade sit in it for maybe five to ten minutes not very long at all um, and then I just I take the wire brush and I start scrubbing on it as you'll see in the next part of the video now I've been using this particular bottle for roughly about a year so it, it doesn't have near and quite enough in it to actually cover the blade and you want to make sure the blade is covered um, so you can just add some water to it you're supposed to dilute the stuff per the instructions anyway but there's really the only time I add water to it is if I need enough just to cover the blade okay so the next step after you let it sit for about five ten minutes is you take the wire brush and start scrubbing on it and I'll put a link to this particular kit that I've got in down in the description of this video um, but yeah you just, you just start scrubbing and you work your way around the blade so once you're done with the front you flip it over and do the same on the back you don't have to let it soak again you can just start scrubbing on it right away
Okay, so once I have that done, one thing I like to do is I like to actually run the brush over the entire plate. And I do the front and the back. So once you get all that done, then what I generally do is I go in and I clean the front of my teeth, the gullets and the back of my teeth, and get all that nastiness from there as well. And it's generally a good idea to do this because it'll actually help the blade cut a lot smoother. Okay, so next I'm gonna take it out of the bath and then I wanna spray it off with clean, fresh clean water on the front, the back, and in, the, in between the teeth down in the gullets and get all that soap off of it. Once I'm finished with that, I'm going to shake off the excess water and I'm going to set it on three of the painter's pyramids and let it dry a little bit while I work on the other two blades. Now, once I have all three blades clean, what I'll do is I'll take a regular old paint filter, the same one I use for filling up my sprayer for my lacquer, um, I mean a clean one obviously, and I'll filter it into one of these little mixing containers and then I'll pour it back into the bottle. Now this particular solution, I, like I said, I've been using it for a little over a year so it's pretty much done. I mean it, it's all brown and black and ick. So I'm, I'm not going to reuse this. Uh, I've actually ordered more and it's on its way and I'm just going through this right now just so I can show you what I do to save it because you can use this stuff over and over and over again. That's kind of the point of it being concentrated and the instructions saying to add water. But I'll typically do this while I'm letting my blades air dry for just a little bit and get it all put away. Now cleaning the tub is simple. I just take the last of my fresh clean water and pour in there and swish it around a little bit with my hand and dump it out and then wipe it out with paper towels. What I'll do now is I'll take a clean paper towel and wipe the blade off and make sure I get all the excess water off any water that might still be on it <clears throat> and be very very careful and get in between the teeth and down in the gullets as well. Okay, now comes the most important part of this whole process. You need to protect your blade with something. I use this Bostic blade coat because it, it doesn't build up a film over time and it, it creates a slick surface and prevents rust. And I'll, I'll even put this on blades when they're brand new after I get them out of the packaging and get all the oil and off of them, oil, oil and whatnot off of them. And I'll, I'll spray it with this before I even put it in my saw for the first time. And basically just spray this stuff on, let it sit for a few seconds, you know, long enough to reach over and get a clean paper towel and then clean it off. And you want to make sure you get down in your teeth and in the gullets as well. But you just wipe it off and you can add multiple coats if you'd like, but you, it's not really necessary. Typically the most I'll add is two. But once you finish the front, then you just flip it over and do the other side. And again, very carefully get down in the teeth and gullets and your blade's protected. So yeah, as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward process. It, um, and I'm sure a lot of you, maybe all of you, actually recognize it from uh, James King of King's Fine Woodworking and Mark Spagnolo, the Wood Whisperer. Um, they, they have the same process and no, I did not get the process from either of them. It just so happens that the three of us just came to the same conclusion on cleaning our blades. <laughs> so yeah, I, I know, like I said before, I know there's a lot of videos out there, but I, I still wanted to get this out there 
just in case there's somebody who missed it from previous um, YouTube creators. And, um, and, you know, I'm all about helping anybody that I can. So if this video helps one person, I'm happy. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit more about blades. Um, I, I mentioned before that I use a, a combination blade, the Forest uh, 40 tooth blade. And when it's being sharpened, I use uh, the Freud 50 tooth combination blade and I also have um, a rip blade that's got a flat grind on it and it's got 25 teeth <clears throat> so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that and I'll, for those of you that don't know I'll, I'll put up an image of the different types of grinds and I'll, I'll go I'll try to explain them I'll see if I can find an image and put it up for you and I'll, I'll sit here and try to explain what the different grinds are um, the normal blade that you buy the most common blade that you can get is a combination blade or a multi-purpose blade and the teeth on it are ground to what's called um, an alternating top bevel or ATB, most commonly referred to as ATB. Uh, and what that is, is one tooth is ground to this angle, another tooth, is, the next tooth is ground to this angle, and they alternate back and forth all the way around the blade. And it usually has a higher number of teeth. Um, a combination blade, um, it, it also has ATB teeth like that but um, depending on what you get you can get a three to one or a four to one and what what that is is the three to one every fourth tooth has a flat grind on it and if the five to one every fifth tooth yeah four to one every fifth tooth is flat grind and what that does is that, that's supposed to allow you to make rip cuts and cross cuts without having to change your blade so often and I've, I've found, in my experience, I've found that it actually does work. Um, a lot of people swear by, you know, you got to have a cross-cut blade to do cross-cuts. you got to have a rip blade to do rip cuts, so forth and so on. I have found that the combination blade does the job very well. And I don't have to switch blades as often. <laughs> um, now, a rip cut blade, um, you can get that in several different combinations. It has fewer number of teeth, like about 25 or so or fewer I think there's fewer anyway yeah it's about 25 or so and you can get those as ATB or you can get those as flat grind um, the flat grind blade that I have I use it for like making small eighth inch dados and things of that nature so I don't have to pull my dado stack out and all that I just slap that blade on and I cut it or if I'm needing to make very precise um, cuts that don't go all the way through and I want them flat I'll use the flat grind blade for that and what, what the flat grind blade is is the teeth are just all flat like that they, they don't cross at all uh, but they're all flat and now the thing of it is is from what I understand all flat top grind blades are rip cut blades but not all rip cut blades are flat grind blades so if you're going to look for a flat grind blade You'll probably see it packaged as a rip cut, as a rip blade, but just because a blade says it's a rip blade does not mean that it's going to have a flat grind on it. So, if you're going to look for one of those, just be careful of that and double check the, the teeth to make sure that they have the flat grind on them that you're wanting. Um, and one question that I get asked a lot, and, and of course there are other grinds also. I'm, I'm, just, I'm kind of jumping all over the place. I know. I'm sorry. Um, one, there, there are other types of grinds also, but as a beginner, a media, mediocre, or mediocre, <laughs> intermediate woodworker, <laughs> sorry guys, um, you don't really need to um, worry too much about those. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the conical and the... Um, triple chip grind I'm, I'm not real sure what they're used for I, I believe the triple trip chip grind is supposed to be for like melamine and things of that nature to help reduce tear out or something along those lines and you also have what's called a high ATB uh, normal ATBs will be about this angle whereas high ATBs I'm trying to get this straight for you guys whereas high ATBs will be more like that and I've never found a use for the, that blade or the conical blade, to be honest with you. I'm sure there are plenty of uses out there for them. It's just not 
something that I, I use on a regular basis. I, have, I don't have a need for it. Okay, so. <laughs> um, and if, in case you can't tell, yes, I, I am sick. I'm, I'm, I've, been, I've had this cold for like two weeks and it, it just won't go away. Um, cat has, has it also, it's terrible. Uh, one question I get asked a lot is, how do you know when your blade needs to be sharpened? Um, the short answer, you'll feel it. You'll just know. Um, you'll, you'll get in there and if you, when you get a new blade and you see how smooth it goes and, and yeah, how smooth it goes, how easy it is to feed and how clean the cut is, um, over time the, the cut will start to get burnt or get a little dirty or, um, it'll be harder to push and that's usually an indication of the blade needs to be sharpened. However, now in this day and age of carbide teeth, um, and even high-speed stainless, high-speed steel, um, they don't always have, that doesn't always mean that they need to be sharpened. Um, that's what this process is, the cleaning process. You can go through and you can clean it and you can get a lot more life out of it. You'll find, what you'll find is a lot of times when a blade feels like it needs to be sharpened, if you just clean it and put it back, it, it works as, almost as good as new, if not as good as new. Um, one suggestion I would make is anytime you think your blade needs to be sharpened, try cleaning it first. Um, that will, and, and then put it back and see if it still does, gives you the same problems. If it does, then there's a good chance that it needs to be sharpened. A couple other things, and yes, I've got my iPad over here because I'm trying to keep notes and make sure I go over everything with you guys. Um, your saw could also need to be adjusted. Um, make sure your, your blade is lined up straight with your miter slots and that your fence is straight parallel to your miter slots and your blade. Uh, that can also cause issues similar to this as well. Now, the, that can actually cause kickback. Um, very, very dangerous kickback. <laughs> um, I've actually seen pictures of guys whose fence is, is misaligned. It pinches in the back and it throws it 30 feet back and goes through a wall. Um, so yeah, make sure your fence, always make sure your fence is aligned. And if you have my saw, I have a video on how to align your fence, the, the R, R rigid R4512, um, which is a similar process for most saws. And most table saws are built roughly the same. And it's, it's a similar process. Not exactly the same, but similar. Uh, another thing is you could have a, a broken tooth, a loose tooth, something along those lines. So inspect your blade. Make sure that all your teeth are good, you don't have any loose carbide or anything like that, and clean it, and then put it back on your saw, and if you're still having problems, then have your blade sharpened. Whether you do it yourself or you send it off, I send all mine off to Forest, um, soon because I know they're gonna sharpen them perfectly every time, and the blade's gonna come back to me in almost as good as new condition. So, it's a little bit of reassurance for me. Yes, it takes a little bit of time, but that's part of the reason why I have multiple blades or two blades that I use. And as a matter of fact, I'm thinking about replacing my Freud combination blade with another forest blade. And that way I can just alternate between the two forest blades because the forest blade is by far the better blade. Um, yeah, that's all I wanted to go over with you guys today. Um, like I said last week, I've got a few more things I need to do, including, including introducing a new tool to my shop and that'll be in the next couple of videos so yeah if, you, if this is your first time visiting me please hit that subscribe button and click on that little bell so you'll get notified when i come out with those videos um i've got a few more maintenance things to do and then i can get started on the project <laughs> uh Again, I'm, I'm, there's, there's a couple reasons I'm not, I'm not saying what it is, and um, you, you'll, you'll understand when, with the video. But trust me, it's, for me, it, it's, it's a big deal. And um, 
So yeah, and until next time, guys, <laughs> happy creating.